Hey folks, welcome back. Wanted to take you through a replay of F-22 Hunter doing the XP-50 uh, Tier 6 Heavy with the Lightning on sale right now. Many people be tempted to pick it up because it is a good plane, but um, you might also just have this sitting in your hangar and want to take it for a spin, and uh, we're going to see XP-50 doing that today. It's one of his first battles in it. He's got a maneuver build, as you can see, a lightweight power plant, gun sight, gas-operated action. And uh, he's going to be rocking the plant, uh, excuse me, the two two rocket base, three garrison, I believe. No, two rocket base, two airfield, one garrison map that's so popular at uh, these mid-tiers that uh, happens so much. And first things first, you go take out air defense aircraft on your nearest rocket base because that's going to give you a leg up. And from here, one would normally expect, I would normally go straight over to the airfield to try and cap it next. Looks like he's going to go mid instead. He's got a bomber coming in. It's quite captured the rocket base, one of the downsides of uh, not carrying the bombs on the XP-50, I think, because with those it could have could have flipped, uh, finished up in the zone there. I do generally carry it on mine, not always, but um, but generally I do. You can see the gun struggle a little bit here, but this is still the right move. It's a bot B-17D. He's still going to be able to take him down. Um, and this is, you know, one of those places, if you can split the guns on your maps, if you're comfortable doing that, you know, let those uh, 20 millimeters kind of get their uh, wind, uh, wind back, that's, a, that's not a bad idea. Um, but so that does give him enough points to capture the zone. We're now up two zones to one. Interestingly, they haven't captured their rocket base yet either. So, and he's going up against a specialized uh, XP-54, which is also an interesting thing. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. For those of you that don't know, the XP-50 is actually faster than the XP-54. So even though the XP-54 has monstrous forward armament, obviously. Looks like the Yak stole that kill from him. Uh, all right, we're going to go take the airfield. That's good. Um, hemming in you know, both airfields, forcing the enemy to respawn in their standard base rather than very close to the action here. Uh, makes a lot of sense. And it's only 105 capture points to get it done. Looks like he's going back out of the zone after the B-17 again. I mean, this does get you higher grade. Right, but um, well, and this also will flip the zone. 60 points here, so this is actually good. It's going to give him give him a capture zone. There you go. That'll flip it. So that's three to two. So now you go whittle away at uh, that slightly um, damaged air base over there, airfield, excuse me, and uh, snipe it, swipe it out from under the enemy. Diving on the zero. Oh, that's hard when your pilot's down like that. <laughs> It's hard. It is. All right, there's the XP-54. He is not paying attention, and that's going to be to his detriment. Um, there's not much he can do at this point. They're at the same energy level. I think that's important to point out. It wasn't like one of them was higher altitude than the other. Oh, the Yak snaked the kill from him again. So when you're kind of at the same energy level, you know, nobody has an altitude advantage. No one has a speed advantage, and you're just you know, right there in that fight. You know, if the XP-54 is in the rear, um, it's going to have an advantage, especially with massive guns, even though it doesn't quite have uh, the speed the XP-50 does. The XP-50's speed is enough to let it run down the XP-54, but not necessarily to escape the XP-54. So uh, you want to be, you know, put yourself in a position to win if you are flying this against it. The same is true of the Lightning, although the reality is with most people carrying Lightning on their P-38Ls, you're probably significantly faster than them, and so in that case you could um, maybe outrun them, particularly if you have a little bit of an energy or boost advantage. So, looks like he's going to play defensive here. They swapped airfields, and he's going to just take care of this bomber. Maybe on the way to that airfield, or maybe just as a defensive effort. I've learned I'm a very aggressive player. Um, I think in comparison maybe to some of my fellow pilots. So if it were me, I would leave the bombers behind and I would be headed over to that airfield. I know the rocket base is already working on it. I would just help it. I'd go over there and pop a plane or two and go ahead and get it flipped. So, but this is not a bad play either. Again, particularly when you're dealing with, you know, as a heavy fighter, you have bombers to deal with. Ooh, okay, two heavies coming in. One of those has to be the XP-54. Yep, 
He's down low, interestingly enough. The key is up high. Looks like the SP-54 went back into the middle zone. So while this is maneuverable, it's not quite as maneuverable as the key is. Um, and so that's a problem if you're going maneuver fighting. But it is a bot, so you know we do have that uh, in our advantage. And the air defense is going to clean him up. So good stuff there. Right now, two zones to three. They're only up by 75 points or so. Uh, 70 points, actually, it looks like. So I think the plan next is to retake the middle. It's a very low health. All right, they, a Fock Wolf 190 is gone. Might be making for the Swoos Goose. I'd be dodging right here. That flat can be brutal. And uh, this plane only has 300 hit points, which is something to think about. Um... XP-54 ignores him again, and that's going to be game over for the XP-54. Um, oh, it would have been if the hurricane hadn't come out of nowhere and, and, and did that. <laughs> so, uh, maybe got caught not looking at the minimap. I know I did. I got sucked into the pursuit of the XP-54 there. Um, and so that can happen to the best of us at times. Fortunately, the bots are carrying their weight. And uh, it's gone up uh, four zones to one at this point. XP-54 looks ugly, doesn't it? But it's not a bad plane. And um, pretty interesting, particularly early in the game when uh, you didn't have uh, U.S. heavies yet. And this was the only one you had, right? Sort of a trainer for the, the upcoming. It was, it was an interesting bird. I think it might perform better in 2.0 than it did in 1.x. I think 1.x it struggled a little bit. I didn't fly mine a whole lot back then. And again, as you saw with the XP-54, right, just pretty easy to knock it down. Um, these guns are not the best, but they're adequate. They're, they're up to the task, right? Um, it's no gunship, but it does a lot of things well, and that's there's something to be said for that. 3 to 2 on the zones now, 648 to 402. This one's pretty much in hand. And squall line has happened. They're already up by one. So this will be interesting to see. Squall is a very important part of the match. Um, and there's a lot of seesawing that can happen right in this time period. If you're in a heavy fighter, pro tip, this is the time to go knock down bombers. And you can see he just changed positions there. He's like, yep, I'm, I'm headed there. Uh, because after squall line, if you can take care of the bombers, enemy bombers right after squall line, the ability of the bots to turn zones, to flip zones, decreases dramatically. And if you're on up the way you are, he is right now, that's kind of like putting your foot on the throat of the enemy, right? Like they're not going to get back up again um, if they don't have a way to capture zones rapidly. And so to take down um, the bombers, to finish off heavy fighters like this to protect your bombers, um, that can really be a, a significant advantage. Oof. Oof. A little friendly ram there. It's all good. Shake it off. Actually, it doesn't look like it was a friendly ram. Yeah, so I guess the bot must have gotten him. Also obliging as well, because here's the other thing. If you have the center zone when squall line hits, the enemy bots for the most part are going to come directly in the center zone. So you don't have to go hunting around the map for them. They're going to try and capture the middle. Um, and so that makes it easy to collect those pelts, right? Kind of going down um, going down the pipe like that. So 12,790, decent score for sure. Uh, five bombers. I don't think he did any air attack aircraft. I think that's all bombers. So, five bombers, 375 capture points, 11 total. You know, solid match there. Uh, I don't have any feedback to give Hunter. I mean, he's a great pilot anyway. Um, you know, just stylistically, I probably would have been hard charging into the red spaces a little more. But I think nipping the enemy's bombers, as you guys saw in my XF90 video, is not a bad strategy for heavies either. Um, I think. What happens is the higher up the tiers you go, the more paying attention to bombers instead of capture points as a heavy, um, the more it becomes required. At this tier, it's still optional. You can still be that offensive force capturing sectors, but at tier 10 and a heavy, you gotta, you gotta go knock down bombers, which is weird because you're gonna spend most of your time in, in the tiers, going up through the tiers as a heavy pilot being offensive. And then uh, suddenly, when you're going to get to the upper tiers, you know, 9, 10, you're going to find yourself having to play defensively. Really a little bit at A2, depending on if you see bombers there or not. But uh, as bombers rise in power, the heavy has to lean more into its defensive role. And there's a very good chance the hunter is just playing that from muscle memory, right? Playing that heavy 
as a more defensive fighter, um, even though this is a lower tier where you've got some flexibility. So Hunter, great job. If you haven't checked out the XP50, a lot of times, if you're like me, you've got gold floating around from boxes or whatever else. You know, it's not a bad pickup. It might be something to grab um, and play around with, particularly if you don't want to put more money in the slot machine to pick up the P38L. Again, I'm not saying the XP50 is as good uh, the, uh, as the as the Lightning is. I'm just saying it's a decent heavy, and you know, if you don't want to spend the money but you still want a new toy, this is not a bad toy to to play around with at the time. So, good stuff, Hunter. Thank you all for being here. I also want to say in this video, can, uh, thank you so much for the pushing me over the mark with 100 subscribers. Definitely appreciate that. Um, hope to be able to get more content for you. Go over and check out Nova's channel and Hunter's channel as well. Um, Hunter has some great videos up, and Nova just did a replay review for me of me in the XF90. And so you get to see some high-tier American heavy gameplay there as well. So have a great weekend. Enjoy your salvage runs. And until the next time, good luck and good hunting.